graph logarithmic functions. f of x equals log base b of x and g of x equals b to the x power are inverse functions. There are two cases to look at. If b is greater than 1, then you have an exponential growth function shown here in blue. So for example, you would have, if you had y equals 3 to the x power, the base is greater than 1, then you have exponential growth. Uh, and then the inverse of that would be y equals log base 3 of x. The other scenario is when b is between 0 and 1. For the exponential function, an example would be y equals 1 half to the x power. That's an exponential decay function. And the inverse of that would be y equals log base 1 half of x. And you can add the parentheses or not, your choice. Let's graph a log function, y equals log base 7 of x. So we have to pick the x values and if we pick wisely, it makes it much easier. So for the first one, one's usually a good choice. Now we would have y equals log base 7 of 1. So we're looking for, we want to figure out 7 to what power equals 1. And the answer is 0. So our first point is 1, 0. And you can see I graphed it there. The next value, it's always a good idea to pick the base. So log base 7 of 7. So the 7 is what I'm substituting. And we want to know what that would equal. So just ask yourself, 7 to what power would give you 7? And the answer is 1. So that gives us the point 7, 1. Another good option is the reciprocal of the number we just used. So 1 seventh. So log base 7 of 1 seventh. So ask yourself 7 to what power equals 1 seventh? And the answer is negative 1 because they're reciprocals. Our ordered pair is 1 seventh, negative 1. And I'll just go ahead and graph both of those. And I could substitute 49 or 1 49th, but you'll see they don't really help to graph. So 7 to what power? equals 1 49th and the answer would be negative 2 giving us the order pair of 1 49th negative 2 which I could graph it's just so close to the y-axis you know it would be somewhere there it's, it's not worth it. I'm going to erase it. All that's left to do is connect those. So uh, just remember, there's a vertical asymptote here, which I'm going to go ahead and write in. It is y, excuse me, it is x equals 0. And I'll graph it as a dashed line because it's not really part of the graph. And the other three points, I will just connect.
I realized that I messed up with the other point, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that. And I wrote in the, the Y scale as I should have before, just to make it easier. Uh, next, the domain and the range. Well, the range, we could see that the graph is going to extend into the negative Y values to zero and also the positive numbers. So the range is all real numbers, but I will write it in interval notation. So there it is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then the domain, by definition, you can only take the log of a positive number. So the domain is that the X values have to be greater than zero. In interval notation, that would be zero from zero to positive infinity. There it is. Next, what about how to find the inverse of f of x equals log base 7 of x? All right, a few things to keep in mind to remember. And that log base b of b to the x power equals x. And that, more importantly, in this case, is that b to the log uh, base b of x power is equal to x. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. So to get the inverse, first we have to write the original function, use y instead of f of x. Next, switch x and y. There we go. And now I have to write it in exponential form. So notice what I did there is I made the, the base 7 is what I made the exponent base. And last, we just have to solve for y. And if I use this property, this cancels out and we're left with y equals 7 to the x power. And I can just write it that way. So the inverse is 7 to the x power. And then there's the graph, which shows that you know, one graph is a reflection of the other. Here is y equals 7 to the x power. And the other one is y equals log base 7 of x. Next, let's, let's look at the connection between if you start with an exponential function and then how you would get the inverse of that. So first, remember that if you needed to graph y equals 2 to the x power, g of x in this case, equals 2 to the x power, we can substitute all real numbers. And that the range is going to be greater than 0. But I'm going to write those in interval notation. And the asymptote is going to be the x-axis, so y equals 0. All right, now to get the points. Make a quick table. And substitute numbers. So I could substitute you know, 0. 2 to the 0 power gives me 1. I could substitute 1. Uh, 2 to the 2nd power is 4. 2 to the 3rd power is 8. And I can graph all those points. I can also mentally substitute more, you know, especially negative x values. So 2 to the negative 1 power, 2 to the negative 1 power would be 1 half. Then 2 to the negative 2 power, 1 fourth, but I don't want to get too close to the x-axis. And then I'm just going to connect those. All right, next, let's find the inverse of g of x. So the inverse is going to be a log function. And what I could do is write, so go through the steps before. y equals 2 to the x power. Switch the x and the y. So 2 to the y power equals x. And then I could take, apply one of the previous properties, log base 2 
of 2 to the y power equals log base 2 of x. And this cancels out. So we're left with y equals log base 2 of x. You can see I wrote that in there. And then to graph it, I'm just going to take all the points from the exponential growth function, all the points that you see here, and the other ones that I came up with. And I will just switch them around. And that will give me the, the graph for y equals log base 2 of x. There are the points, and then just connect it carefully. Keep in mind that y equals log base 2 of x is a function. All right, now to connect it, you could do this in two separate steps. So you could do the right side first. And then the part that goes below the x-axis. Just make sure not to hit the y-axis. Uh, the domain, it's, it's basically the domain and range from g of x uh, reversed. So what was the range for g of x is now the domain from 0 to infinity. And the range is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And the asymptote is x equals 0, which I'm only going to draw on this lower part to, to show you.